Tassie just has this own difference about it. So seeing it from the ocean is just something else. The swells build up and the seas are exciting. You have spectacular scenery. The weather changes as much as the landscape does. You can see rocks that are as old as 1.4 billion years. There's such a diverse flora and fauna. There's so many accessible walks. So you can really get out and explore. The history of the area. You're getting an in-depth visitation. One of the most amazing places in Australia for food and wine. It's just so beautiful. So the 10-day cruise of Tasmania for us starts and ends both in Hobart, that we do everything from the southwest to the east coast, it takes us all the way from Port Navia right around to roughly Wineglass Bay on the east coast of Tasmania. Day one to day 10, totally different experience the whole way through. Absolutely brilliant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board the Coral Discoverer. I hope you have a wonderful time on this journey. You will see some of the most exciting uh, landscapes Ever. We made the decision to try for Bathurst Harbour and Port Davey straight away rather than uh, take a chance later on when the weather might not be so good. The panoramic view of Bathurst Harbour. You can swing right round to see the whole harbour out to the Break Sea Islands, which are magnificent in their own right. Ah, uh, pledge deck. I'm happy to bring down. Uh, the Explorer. The ability to walk on board from the lower deck, seat safely, and they lower the whole outfit into the water is just, in my experience, quite unique. So, well done to the designers. We have a very shallow draft which allows us to get in very close and drop all of our guests right onto the tracks that they're going to go on. And there we were looking at all the little bays and the coves and the incredible tannin of the water from the little creeks that were running down through the tea tree which gave it that colour. Bathurst Harbour is an enormous body of water, three or four times the size of Sydney Harbour, and it's such varied terrain, so the opportunity to go in and be able to explore that and be sheltered from the Break Sea Islands, that, that was such a great opportunity. Yeah. Tasmania is a famous place for hiking. It's an island, so much of the flora and the fauna here is native. There's huts that people can take refuge in all over the place if you need it. That's Clayton's Corner and Clyde Ann Winsome's hut. And they're related very much to the King family who really started that area off back in the 1930s. Walker's huts were erected often by volunteers in a lot of the national park areas so that uh, you could take refuge and parks and wildlife continue to manage that really well. Hiking's absolutely magnificent. You're going up through the forest, you're coming down the escarpments, you're looking out onto the Tasman Sea. It's absolutely beautiful. You can't describe the smell of the air, the trees, it's refreshing and I feel it's good for you. Port Davey, it's just so peaceful. The surroundings are just beautiful, yeah. It's Tasmania, you see all four seasons in one day, but just getting out there, embracing it, seeing it for what it is, it's incredible. When we were out at sea, when we we're going round Tasman Island, we'll see large albatross, a number of species, as well as prions and petrels. The lighthouse and Matsaika, really special places. If you come to Tasmania and you're interested in rocks, which you should be, we can get up close and personal to a lot of these beautiful rocks. These granites stretch all the way up on the eastern coast of Tassie up to Victoria. So there's different types of granites all over the world, but these are some of the most iconic. They were formed deep within the Earth's surface from molten magma. They cooled slowly, and thank goodness they did, because when you look at the granites, you see all these beautiful crystals, different coloured crystals, sort of whether it's quartz or pink felspar or the micas. 
which again is very characteristic of this part of Tasmania. And the ability that we had to go around the end of the island out into the Southern Ocean and to be able to see that beautiful foam in, in those tunnels. Very unique experience. And I bet you, most of you will probably think the Breaks the Islands are a special place by now. It's a, an interesting one, South Bruni Island. You have this incredibly large bay which gives you the opportunity to go for some uh, really enjoyable walks. The sand is so pure because of the quartz crystals in these granites which have been eroding away for hundreds of millions of years. We get to go out on an expedition twice a day with the expedition team and with the guest lecturers as well, so providing expertise and knowledge. You have a lot of uh, vegetation, so you have a lot of different botanical species there. The, the shorebirds, I think, are the best to see the beautifully groomed oyster catchers. The walking and the wildlife, that was really special. And then you come to Franklin itself and you have the Wooden Boat Centre, which is famous for hue and pine boats. Hue and pine's extremely good for boat building because it, it doesn't rot. Some of the trees on the west coast have been carbon dated back 30,000 years. Since 1975, hewn pine has been protected in Tasmania. Because it's uh, such a precious timber, we pay a lot of money for it. Uh, the government allows about three companies to actually reclaim so much per year. I think at the moment, Hewan's going for about $50,000 a cubic metre. And one of the best boat building colleges, if you like, and they have courses there. Uh, you can make your own yachts, kayaks and things like that. We do quite a lot of restoration work and this is important for our students because they need to understand when they get out to the real world how to repair existing boats. And across the road of course, really easy, you've got Frank Cider House and it gives you the opportunity to go and enjoy a cider after a uh, cool trip up the Huon River. We spent some uh, time in Adventure Bay, which is the eastern side of Bruny Island. A magnificent bay giving good protection from the southwesters that we had. And for those who like history, Tasmania is a hugely important place for the heritage of Australia. And there's examples of that all over the island. The Bly Museum, it has a private collection. You can find out everything about the explorers that came in. There's log books, documents, letters, maps on the walls that are original. This is built for two reasons. Built to house this and also as a memorial for St Peter's Church at Variety Bay, which was the first settlement on Bruton in 1842. From 1642 with Abel Tasman and all the way through to 1802 with Nicholas Bourdain. It's just one of those places that has so much in it. You could spend a day at least in here. We decided that we could get into Wineglass Bay, which gives you spectacular views of the granite cliffs on Frozen Bay Peninsula. Walks either up to the lookout, magnificent views. You can get out into the bush. There's so much varied terrain, so a lot of different vegetation and a lot of wildlife that's endemic to Tasmania, even in such a small space. Or if they wish to just go ashore and, and do a bit of a beach comb, then it's an ideal shoreline to do that. It's a national park, it's fully protected, so what we see here is just totally unspoiled. I was unprepared for how beautiful it is. It is stunning, just really, really wonderful. I think Tasmania is one of the most amazing places in Australia for food and wine and coming down here is a great opportunity for the passengers to get a real sense and taste of the produce. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. We get wines and pair them to the meals that we provide. The food is superb. We get fed well, the guests get fed well, it's really good. We like to use as much Tasmania produce as possible. I think it's the pristine natural environment that leads to great produce. We buy all of our food basically the day that we depart. Tasmania especially has the best seafood 
Anything seafood is next level. Local cheese and Cape Grim are great. They provide us with a lot of our lamb and beef. The food in Tasmania is something that everyone should experience. And I love the wine as well, so... Uh... <laughs> We get to do our wine tastings. Usually we'll do three of our favourite wines on board and then we'll get to pair it with a canapé for each wine. This afternoon's wine tasting, we've got a Nocton Pinot Noir, we've got a Pooley's Chardonnay and then a Piper Brook Pinot Gris, which are pretty popular on board. Wine tasting is a great opportunity for the guests to sit down together, try all the local premium wines and try the local produce that we get to pair with all the wines. Mariah Island's a little bit like a, uh, an island ark. There are no cats, there are no dogs on the island, and you go ashore and the first thing you're hit by is the animal life, and the birds. We have 12 endemic species of birds, which we hope to see on every trip. One of our passengers has already seen 10. He's what we call a twitcher, and we're <laughs> so hoping to tick those off. 18 million mutton birds come to Tasmania to breed. They scratch out their burrows practically the same day each year, lay their egg almost to the same day each year, and we get to see those birds with their chicks. The Cape Barren Geese, they were introduced, but certainly have become the guardians of Mariah Island. You've got paddy melons, which resemble small wallabies. You've got the eastern quolls here too. You have the wombats in large numbers around the area. Bennett's wallaby, you have the forest of kangaroos, they're all around. We've been seeing things like the southern brown bandicoot, and that's been a very special occasion. And even today, we've actually seen the Tasmanian devil. Such diverse sea life as well. We've got southern right whales that will migrate here. You get pods by the hundreds and thousands of these common dolphins. So all these things are something that people want to see and not always able to see them. And it's just a relaxing and wonderful place to come to and particularly for people who, who want a different experience. It has that relationship of being distant but wonderful. We go ashore, we do walks uh, from, uh, from the beach there and there we look at the, uh, the history in that part of Tasmania. You get to a place and you have a walk, it's always different around Tasmania too. I'm seeing places that I've never had the chance to go to before. It's really remote, it's always really lovely and peaceful out here. The guests can come in, there's a lot of history. It's just a great day to go and explore. There's certainly plenty of opportunity for people to walk into the deeper wilderness areas, but also lots of accessible walks. And in the last few years, Parks and Wildlife have really gone to a lot of trouble to upgrade some of the wilderness walks to preserve that wilderness. But for people who just want to do short day walks, there's a lot of those well-marked tracks. So there's a lot of variety for people. It's very nice and calm. Down here you can uh, really see what's going on. Uh, an absolute paradise for walking. Not too many people here, so there's a lovely sense of isolation, almost serenity. It's absolutely fantastic, I've really enjoyed it. I wouldn't call myself a hiker, I'm really more a walker. But no, it was fun. It's been great fun. Just walk amongst the birds and just the way the water moves. I think, I think it's a lovely thing to do. When we go to Mariah Island, we see the fossil cliffs. There's just thousands and thousands of fossils from the Permian age. There's just so many of them, they're so abundant and they're formed in a different way to anywhere else. And so people come to see them because they were formed in cold water when Tasmania was almost part of Antarctica, which is a surprise to people. You have fossils in other areas, but the cliffs here are easily seen and certainly can tell you that it was down under water 290 million years ago. You look up at these ancient cliffs and you know that they've taken hundreds and hundreds of millions of years to form. 
It's a wonderful experience. Honestly, I've been with the company for almost three years and I thought that was probably the best cruise I've done with them. Just cruising along those cliffs that are almost 100 metres high and um, going through the cave systems that have been formed through erosion. It makes you feel quite small once you're right in it. There you are looking into sea caves, looking into the stratified rock formations, seeing the horizontal dolerite, and then you're also looking at the horizontal sandstone. And sometimes they actually mix together, which is uh, quite incredible. I'm into the geology and the scenery. The plated cliffs are uh, very, very spectacular. In fact, they're such that many people would think that they came and were uplifted from the sea, but they haven't been. They're actually laid down on the surface. And it is stained this colour due to the tannins, the vegetation up the top running down from the groundwater there. So we can see rocks that are over a billion years old. We can see the effects of glaciation and the ice ages, which is fairly recent geologically. We can see rocks that are 400 million years old. We can see rocks that were formed when the dinosaurs walked the earth. So it's all here and we can do it in 10 days. We were lucky enough to go into Quarantine Bay being able to get off the ship is really nice. We call it land time. And it's nice to be able to see what the guests get to see. We went to a female run cheesery, which is called Grand View, named after its Grand View. And they make their own cheese. And from the leftover whey, they distilled their own gin and vodka, some of the best in the world. After leaving the cheese farm, we caught a quick bus ride down to Pepperberry's art farm, run by volunteers, with a 1.5 kilometer walk. On the walk, you can see beautiful sculptures or handmade. I found that the guests really just enjoyed just seeing something a little bit different. It's just a wonderful experience. Such a good time. It's fantastic. Port Arthur, it's a small town. It's an exceptionally beautiful place to walk around. And there we look at the historic penal system in Tasmania and in Australia. It was completely different from anywhere else in the world. An area where they tried to rehabilitate it didn't always work. It's the area where they separated the men from the boys. That was important. And the information you get, it's absolutely second to none. They're doing the restoration very slowly, but they're doing it very, very well. So you can still see the old, but it's not like, hey, I'm new. There's just an abundance of heritage buildings here. So for history crafts, and there's been plenty on this tour, there's lots of great details for them. The places we go to are absolutely magical places, so I really encourage the guests to enjoy these excursions together. The expedition leaders and guides that we have are so knowledgeable about everything we're looking and seeing. And it's, it's just been an absolute pleasure to walk around with them and listen to their depth of knowledge. It's been fantastic. Just being able to have a drink and ask some questions is something I feel like a lot of other big ships, you would never get to experience that. You're not just out on a cruise. You're at, as I said, you're learning and there are people there to explain things to you. They give you enough information. They don't give you so much information, you go, what are they talking about? And then of course, if you want to know more, they'll point you to a reference book. I think it's just really good. We've got some expert geologists on board and you can ask them any questions you like. Anything you didn't understand when you were at school, really. <laughs> If you understand what you're looking at, it's a much better experience. We've got to continue to utilise uh, guest lecturers who are knowledgeable in the area and also, of course, expedition teams to be able to uh, interpret the whole place. It takes time for everybody to learn things about Tasmania and it comes down to our company making sure that you work as a team. 
I like the people. I love speaking to people and they've uh, got similar minds as us. And we get the chance to actually go on every table and go and speak to every, everyone, so uh, it's fantastic. They're people with a common interest. They don't need the lights and glamour of the big cruise ships. I think, yeah, they're very nice people. You get on well because you're all of the same mind. This is what you like to do, otherwise you wouldn't be here. This is what interests you. I mean, what more can you want? We haven't run out of grog. I mean, things are very special. <laughs> yeah, vibes are high. <laughs> it's like a big family. Some passengers, like when they get off or they get really upset about it and they don't want to go home. And Coal Expeditions has put on a fantastic tour for us. Great bunch of people. I've really enjoyed it. Being able to access some of the more remote places and get to experience the wildlife, the environment, and see things that have been pretty much untouched. There's nothing really like Tasmania. It's just perfect. Mm.